All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about the antiderivative. So since these days we're anti-everything, let's be antiderivatives. <laughs> so we're going to have here our space of functions. Uh, let's just say this is going to be a set of functions, differentiable. Actually, this is, both will be sets of functions. Let's put it that way. Um, so we're going to assume we have a set of functions uh, that are differentiable on some domain. We don't really have to be precise. Let's say f lives there. And we're going to have a map between these two sets of functions, or an operator, that will send f to f prime. And you know the name of that operator is the differential, the derivative operator. And let's say that the functions depend on some x. So we have that. We have an operation or an operator that sends f to its derivative, and that is the derivative operator, and now, or differential operator if you want. And then we would like to have something that goes back to that f. And we don't quite get that, but we almost get it. Um, and when I call that the antiderivative. But now I have to tell you a couple things about it. Uh, I said that we wouldn't quite get there, and let me give you an example. Let's say that your function is f of x equals x squared plus 2, and you take your derivative that's going to be sent to, when, under this map, to its derivative, which is 2x. Right? But what about the function g of x? That is x squared plus 3. Well, that one gets sent to g prime of x, which is equal to 2x again. So, when you want to return from this one to this one, or from this one to this one, which one do you pick? And so that's why I said we don't quite go back, but we will go back to a function. You could do a more general function and say that the antiderivative of f of x, I guess f prime of x, dx, sorry, let's erase that, dx, not just d, dx, is going to be the antiderivative of 2x dx, and since I cannot pick which function to go back to, I'm going to say I'm going to go back to x squared, because when I take the derivative of x squared, I go to 2x, plus some constant c that I don't know. So I'm really going to a one-parameter uh, group or a, a one-parameter set of um, functions that is going to be determined by this parameter c. I'll leave it open whenever we're talking about um, applications, th this parameter c will be, uh, will come out from the, from the application itself. So, so those usually are not, it's not a problem to leave it like that. So let me give you a couple examples. So, so what is the, the idea behind this? All right, so before we do any examples, let me tell you a little bit, there's one more I want to talk about before that. So remember the derivative of x to the n. You did it in two steps, right? Step one, you dropped the n. Step two, you subtracted one from the um, exponent. So now when you want to undo something in mathematics, or think about it taking an inverse, usually we do things in the opposite order. And to give you an example in real life how you do this all the time, when you put your socks on and then you put your shoes on, how do you undo that process? Well, you have to take off the first thing you, the last thing you put on. So if you say I put my shoes on, my put my socks on first, and then my shoes on, and I'm gonna do the inverse. I'm gonna have to take off my shoe first because you cannot take your socks off unless they really have a lot of holes, and that would be a problem. Uh, and then you take off your socks. 
so you're doing it in the opposite order. So when I want to do the antiderivative, so I took the derivative of x to the n, when I want to take the antiderivative of x to the n, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to undo the last thing I did. The last thing I did was subtracting 1 from the exponent, I'm going to add a 1 to the exponent. What was the first thing I did? I dropped the exponent. So now I multiply times exponent, to undo it, I'm going to divide by that new exponent. And that gives you your first rule, which is going to be called the power rule. Now you think this rule works for everybody, but then I tell you what happens when n is equal to negative 1. You have 0 in the denominator, so we have to make that caveat that this does not work for negative 1. Any other number, any other exponent, it definitely does work. And we will have a different rule for whenever n is uh, different than negative 1. So let me write that. I want to write a table for you guys, and then we finally get to examples that I keep advertising and I don't do. Okay, so we already talked about this one. Let's do another one. For example, so the sine and the cosine. They tend to cause trouble for one reason, because we've taken so many derivatives of um, the sine and the cosine that then we get messed up with the signs. Uh, for example, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so this one just gives me the sine. But the derivative of the cosine is negative sine, so I have to do the, deriv the derivative of negative cosine in order to get the sine. So, to verify this, all these formulas I'm writing, you just got to go from right-hand side to left-hand side and take the derivative and verify that you actually get what I claim you're getting. So, why? Because I'm telling you what function would you need to write and take the derivative of to get whatever your integrand is. This would be the integrand or the, uh, well, later we'll call this the indefinite um, derivative, uh, integral, sorry. Right now it's just called the antiderivative. Um, nonetheless, let's write a few more. Oh, I like this one. Now this one right here, which I was writing backwards, I'm not going to lie, um, which is going to be the case when n is equal to negative 1, and I didn't make my comment here, by the way, n is not equal to negative 1. When n is equal to negative 1 here, you have 1 over x dx, or you can write it just as dx over x, however you want to write it. This is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x. Yes, I was writing it backwards, and that sometimes happens. Um, I think those are the ones that we will need for the moment. So let's go ahead and solve a, a couple of examples. So let's compute the antiderivative of, for example, um, this is a typical one. Something like that. Uh, again, as before, no, we go and look at our, our uh, table, and we notice that the only one that may help us, or the ones that are going to probably help us, are this and this. Uh, the rest, probably not, not very helpful right now. So what do I need to apply them? And there's another thing that I didn't mention, is that the antiderivative, just as the derivative, is linear, meaning that you can split, split sums out and pull constants out, just as we normally have uh, uh, done. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I want to put them all the terms, put all the terms in this form or this form. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do it, I'm going to distribute this 1 over x squared x cubed over x squared is going to be x, x over x squared is going to be 1 over x, and 1 over x squared is going to be 1 over x squared. And I'm almost there. These first two terms are in the form I need them. Here the exponent is 1. Here I have this form right, right here. And this one I do have to rewrite in terms of um, negative exponent to make it work. So 
So I can take the antiderivative of this one. The power is 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1. This one is just using the rule that we have here. And you're going to ask, why am I not adding c's on every one of the terms? Because you're just adding a constant. You don't know what value you'll take. At the very end, you can write it as a single constant. Add them all together and call it just c. Uh, now, the next one is going to be x to the negative 2 plus 1 over negative 2 plus 1. And now you do want to remember your plus c at this point. Otherwise, you're going to get points taken off. That's my tax. So here we get x squared over 2 plus natural log of absolute value of x. This one is going to be x to the negative 1. And there's going to be a negative 1 in front. So I'm going to write as negative 1 over x by using the, the x to the negative 1, putting it in the denominator, and then plus c. And that's, that's my antiderivative right there. All right. I'm going to raise this, and I'm going to do uh, another problem. And uh, I think this is about as much as we can do so far, because then after that, we have to learn techniques of integration. We're going to learn u substitution in Calc 1, and then in Calc 2, we're going to get into a lot more uh, techniques of integration. So let me do another example, and then we'll leave it at that. By the way, before I go to the next example, I forgot to tell you how I remember my uh, derivatives of the uh, antiderivatives of the sine and the cosine. Uh, because if, if you try to remember them all, usually they will get all jumbled up when you're trying to remember which one was the derivative or which one was the antiderivative. I remember the derivatives. Derivative of the sine is the cosine. When I want to compute the antiderivative, I just change the sign of it. Derivative of the cosine is negative sign. When I want the antiderivative, I change the sign of it, and then I get it right. Um, that's easier than trying to remember which one goes with which, because then you, you, it's very common to get mistaken there. So, so just, if you like my technique, great. If you don't, great as well. Pick the one you want. All right, so let's do one last one, and uh, let's do something like x2 1 half. Uh, minus sine of x, for example. This is also known as the square root, but I already put it in the form that I needed. So here you would do x to 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1. And then here, remember, derivative of the sine is cosine. So the antiderivative, negative cosine. That's how it works for me. And then you get here, 1 half plus 1 is going to be 3 halves over 3 halves plus the cosine of x plus c. And then this one dividing by 3 halves is the same as multiplying times the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is 2 thirds. Looks a, looks a bit nicer that way. Plus a constant c. And that's... That's about that. All right. I think I'm going to leave it at that for this time, and then we'll see you in the next video.